Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here, and today we are actually talking about the Olympics that are coming up here in China because they're already rife with cybersecurity warnings and issues. And here's what's going on. And this is actually two different stories I want to share with you in this vein. The first one is coming from Bloomberg, and here's what's going on. China has promised the world's top athletes essentially access to partially unfettered internet during the Olympic Games, which start on February 4th, essentially dropping the Great Firewall of China that blocks services like Facebook and YouTube, typically from the Chinese population, but they're gonna do this and basically unlock it for official venues and hotels at the games. But obviously security experts say there are reasons to exercise caution, and I will throw my voice into there as well, having traveled to China, worked there, and seen it firsthand myself. Now, Chinese companies that specialize in data collection, surveillance, and artificial intelligence are among the official sponsors and suppliers of these Winter Olympics. Now, Washington, D.C. and its allies have accused some of these corporations in the past of providing networking and data management, including Huawei Technologies, iFly Co., and others, of potentially being used for espionage or surveillance of things like minorities in Xinjiang, such as the, the Uyghur minority population. Now, Huawei and its peers deny these allegations, but cybersecurity consultants talking to Bloomberg warn that those systems will subject athletes to the same kind of surveillance, movement tracking, and monitoring that most Chinese citizens deal with on a daily basis. Among the concerns is the risk that state actors or criminals could use the designated Wi-Fi hotspots and bubbles to snoop on private communications or even install malware or other vulnerabilities onto personal devices. That could turn in, obviously, uh, you know, very bad information uh, to give away to the Chinese government, talking about contacts and all these kinds of things. And so we are looking at potentially anybody that is using that infrastructure as an attack. And because the government typically owns the uh, cellular infrastructure, in China, uh, that could actually work the same as Wi-Fi, meaning uh, state-sponsored uh, entities could possibly get into mobile phones even if they're not using the wireless. Now, a growing number of delegations are taking this threat seriously. Australia, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Canada are among the delegations that are advising their athletes to actually keep their Wi-Fi network, uh, basically keep their devices off of Wi-Fi networks, and also to use burner phones if possible, meaning, hey, don't take your normal iPhone or your Android or whatever, go get a burner phone, bring that, don't load it up with all of your stuff. Now, the U.S. has issued a warning to American athletes as well that their devices may also be compromised with malicious software, and, and here we are. Now, the Beijing committee has rejected uh, this apparent advice to athletes around the globe, saying, and I quote, this is completely groundless and these concerns are wholly unnecessary. I will get to that as well soon, uh, soon, as, soon as soon as I finish this bit here. Now, the committee said that China has passed several cybersecurity laws that provided protections for privacy and data, uh, essentially for its citizens and foreign visitors. Now, the game's official anti-software, antivirus software maker uh, is Key and Shing, and they will run a central hub offering, quote, full coverage and high quality network security. And that's according to a company statement. Its majority shareholder, Key Xiang Dong, is a co-founder of Keyho 360, which is an antivirus um an antivirus platform, and that was actually sanctioned in 2020. Key and Xing will have visibility over data that crosses the network, meaning overseas traffic and uh, anything else, meaning if your device is attached and routing through this, they're essentially gonna see and be able to inspect it. In an analysis of their mobile protection software, Internet 2.0 reported that, quote, a significant amount of user data is being collected by the software, and there you go, Key Xing Dong, parted ways with Kehoe 360 in 2019. Now that is very true essentially of uh, Chinese software. When I was there working, they have different classifications and understandings of things like malware or adware, meaning here in the United States and many other places, if uh, essentially a program that you are installing sideloads, sideloads programs into your computer without your knowledge or your consent by basically you checking, yes, please install this as well, that is essentially considered malware here in the United States and other places. But in China, that is very common. And when we put in threat detection systems to a client that I was there to service at that time, it essentially lit up like a Christmas tree saying that absolutely everything in their office was infected including IoT devices, that is a very terrifying prospect. But 
to the point where China is also saying, well, these are baseless, there's no cause for concern, I will remind you of the Sochi Olympics in Russia where we saw exactly this. There were reports coming out of there that people connecting to local Wi-Fi were having devices compromised within minutes of the actual connection, and Russian intelligence was basically handing out flash drives and press packets to journalists that the journalists were like, yeah, we're not plugging this into our devices, which were found to contain infections when cybersecurity experts got a, uh, got a hold of them. I actually had the privilege, interestingly enough, of speaking to a lot of the Olympic committees uh, about six months ago, eight months ago, something like that, uh, essentially to talk about cybersecurity with a lot of these for both the winter and the summer games. And that is essentially a lot of the advice that I gave. Don't bring your actual devices. Don't bring anything that would collect data on you. You can honestly live without your entire contact list, you know, for a couple of weeks, not to mention all the apps and, and the information that we are just pouring out of ourselves onto Facebook and other data mining platforms that essentially, because it's routing through Chinese infrastructure, whether it's cellular or wireless, they can get their hands on. So obviously that's a huge thing. I am thrilled to see the United States and other countries essentially giving that advice. Stay off Wi-Fi, get a burner phone, don't bring anything. That's what I do when I've traveled there. Now, on top of this, we also have news from the AFP and this is also concerning, which is why the Chinese government, when they say this is completely unfounded, are, quite frankly, not being direct with us. The app that all attendees of the upcoming Beijing Olympics must use has encryption flaws that could allow personal information to leak. And that is according to uh, the basically the Citizen Lab out of the University of Toronto. This, quote, simple but devastating flaw in the encryption of the My 2022 app, which is used to monitor COVID and is mandatory for athletes, journalists, and other attendees of the games in China's capital, could allow health information, voice messages, and other data to be leaked, according to Jeffrey Knockle, who essentially authored the report for the Citizen Lab. Now, the International Olympic Committee responded to the report by saying that users can disable that app's access to parts of their phone and that assessments from two unnamed cybersecurity organizations, quote, confirm that there are no critical vulnerabilities. But, but... Here we go. Now, the committee talking to AFP said this. The user is in control over what the app can access on their device. They also added that installing this on cell phones isn't required, quote, as accredited personnel can log onto the health monitoring system onto the web page instead. Now, the committee also asked if the Citizen Lab uh, could turn over their report so they could understand those concerns better. Citizen Lab actually said that it notified the Chinese organizing committee for the games of, the issue, of these issues in early December and gave them 15 days to respond and 45 days to fix the problem prior to publication, but they got no reply. And I quote, China has a history of undermining encryption technology to perform political censorship and surveillance. That is 100% correct. We have seen essentially cryptographic systems in advanced products that are being sold in China essentially have those hardened encryption systems as a standard here in the United States stripped down and replaced with weakened encryption per the Chinese government's requirement. I quote again, as such, it is reasonable to ask whether the encryption in this app was intentionally sabotaged for surveillance purposes or whether the defect was born of developer negligence. The case for the Chinese government sabotaging my 2022's encryption is problematic. Now, here's the nuts and bolts of essentially what's going on here. My, 20, my 2022, the app, doesn't authenticate SSL certificates, meaning it's using a self-signed. This means that other parties, third parties, could actually access the app's data while the data is being transmitted without having the usual third-party SSL certificates in place. Essentially, what they're talking about is running a man in the middle. If you are using a legitimate third-party validated certificate, let's say off of your phone or your computer, and you go somewhere like your bank, you see that little green lock, there's that third-party validation that says some major third-party source is actually validating and trusting that, and so you know it's not a self-signed certificate. Also, because... Um, China owns the infrastructure that the encryption goes through on top of this weakened encryption stance that the app has. They can also run a man-in-the-middle attack running SSL decryption. We actually do this at the enterprise level legitimately in organizations. So as you are going, let's say, to that potential phishing site, if you cannot decrypt SSL, then the firewall or the threat detection system cannot see that infection you're trying to download and it will go through it. But if we can decrypt SSL and see the traffic coming in and out, we know that we're secure from the internet to the firewall and then from the firewall to the user. 
we know it can stop at the firewall and get checked for threat. Conversely, if there is something in the middle that can essentially open and inspect it, that also means it can copy it and that layer of encryption that you think is secure is actually not. Now, while the app is transparent about the medical information it collects as part of Chinese efforts to screen for COVID, essentially Citizen Lab said, quote, it is unclear with whom or which organizations it shares this information. Meaning, if you are there, let's say as a foreigner, saying, yes, I am COVID free, I'm COVID free, oh no, I have COVID, somebody is collecting that information outside of the Chinese government. And the question is, who are they sharing it with? We have no idea. Now, interestingly enough, Citizen Lab, looking at the My 2022 app, also found internal lists, um, one called illegalwords.txt, a text file, and another one of quote unquote politically sensitive phrases in China, many of which relate to China's political situation about Tibet or the Uyghur Muslim minority that's been in the news lately and all of that. Also key words like CCP evil, meaning the, the communist uh, Chinese party or the Chinese communist party space evil and Xi Jinping, China's president, uh, essentially are on these lists as well. Although Citizen Lab said that they were unclear if that list was being actively used to censor or if they were simply recording it, meaning if I wrote, you know, CCP is evil or something like that, are essentially, they're not blocking me necessarily from saying that, but maybe they're flagging me to say, ah, Nick's not allowed in the country again. Or if I say free to bed or, you know, anything else that basically flies in the face of the Chinese government. Now, because of these features, if you are looking at essentially how this is created and what it is doing, this app should violate both Google and Apple's policies in their respective app stores, especially because, uh, you know, here we are. They have privacy policies in place that don't allow these kinds of things. But Apple and Google both kowtow to the Chinese government very, very deeply because they want those as markets. Uh, you can look up Project, Project Dragonfly uh, on the Google side. And last time I was in Beijing, the Apple store was the biggest freaking Apple store I've ever seen in my life. It was like five stories. It was massive. So Apple has a huge presence, especially in the wealthy parts of China. But, and I quote Citizen Lab again, also China's own laws and national standards pertaining to privacy protection, providing potential avenues for future redress are obviously in play. Not to mention the fact that China has a standing order for, of any of its companies that do business outside of China if they are collecting information on citizens abroad, primarily here in the United States, but other places as well, the Chinese government will collect that. So this is a huge, huge problem. And as I mentioned in the previous, uh, you know, 2014 uh, Sochi uh, Olympics, and, and that was a huge issue. We saw Russian intelligence do this. They are notorious for this. The Chinese government is notorious for these kinds of things as well. So we cannot take these things at face value. We have way too much evidence of malfeasance uh, going back years and years and years at this point. So if you've got essentially an enclave of foreigners basically going to be there using your infrastructure and the world is watching, why not data mine them? And I think that's exactly what they're going to do. So that is your news of the day. If you're going to the Olympics, don't take your normal devices. Use burner devices. Make sure they are inspected and wiped. And when you bring them home, don't put them on your personal wireless network because they'll start gathering telemetry. We've seen other Chinese-based apps do that kind of stuff. Like a colleague of mine found TikTok doing that. So all you TikTok users out there, I don't know why you're using it, but here we are. So make, make sure that you're being careful. Make sure that you're being safe. If you don't have to log in or use something, don't even touch it while you're overseas at the Olympic Games. And good luck to all the athletes. And that is your news of the day. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please stay private. Thanks, everyone.